Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, of course, I would like to, to welcome Commissioner Zabramopoulos representing the Commission and, of course, representing the European Union. And I would like to welcome him, welcome him once again and thank him for the constant support uh, that he and the European Commission have been showing to, to Malta as it plans and prepares for its first ever presidency of the Council of the European Union. Our officers are maintaining close contact with their counterparts in the European Commission and the valuable feedback received from the Commission has been very useful and this is greatly appreciated. This morning we have discussed the upcoming Maltese Presidency's priorities in the Home Affairs area, particularly, I must say, migration and asylum. It is um, a very crucial um, area and I think that migration became very crucial also for the future of the European Union itself. Malta, as you know, is a Mediterranean country and we happen to take the presidency next year in a, uh, in a context that it is indeed um, very useful, I must say, that Malta as a Mediterranean country is taking the presidency for uh, the first six months of next year. I'm saying this because the issue, the issue of migration remains an issue in itself, but it's an issue also of contention among the EU member states. We have to say that progress has been registered in addressing the issue, but a lot still needs to be done. I believe that to reach an agreement, a fundamental and key word is necessary, and this is solidarity. Solidarity should unite us all in trying to reach an agreement. Therefore, the Maltese Presidency will strive to make progress on the various aspects of migration and asylum in parallel. The common European asylum system, border control, returns and readmission, as well as tackling migrant smuggling. Definitely, the EU Turkey deal is an important element. The flows along that route have decreased significantly. However, with approximately 700 crossings into Greece per week, more needs to be done. We need to continue working to ensure the deal continues to be respected and respected by both sides. In the meantime, we must give due importance to the central Mediterranean route. According to International Organization for Migration, the number of migrant deaths at sea between Libya and Italy since the start of the year is over 4,200, higher than the full year totals for 2014 and 2015. And of course, we have to say that uh, until now, we had over 160,000 crossings, so far at least. We must also not overlook the route that is taking migrants from Egypt towards the center of the Mediterranean. Therefore, we intend to give a Mediterranean dimension to the presidency, to bring to the fore the realities of the EU's southern, southern border, which at the end of the day affect all member states. Much depends on developments over the remaining weeks before Malta takes over the presidency. There is still a long way to go for the EU to have a common position on migration, but we are determined to achieve as much progress as possible during our presidency on the basis of the work that the Slovak presidency is doing. When it comes to the common European asylum system, Malta attaches a lot of importance to the proposals aimed at revising the uh, CEAS. There are seven legislative proposals on the table, and of course, depending also on how far discussions go under the current Slovak presidency, the Maltese presidency will take a concerted effort to achieve as much progress as possible. On the Dublin system reform, we face a difficult challenge 
but also a very important one. We must create a system that can withstand future challenges and that means we must have a system where solidarity kicks in, in, kicks in efficiently and where responsibility is shared equitably. When it comes to the term flexible solidarity as a policy alternative to the corrective allocation mechanism as set out by the Commission in the Dublin proposal, this can be open to different interpretations. Therefore, we have to learn more, we have to hear more on the term flexible solidarity. The Maltese Presidency will strive to achieve a compromise which is politically acceptable but also guarantees effective solidarity. In my opinion, for solidarity to be effective, it cannot be flexible, certainly not a la carte or a pick and choose. When it comes to relocation and resettlement, we are aware of Malta's contribution and Malta has continued to receive a considerable amount of asylum applications. In fact, from January to August this year, we had over 1,200 uh, first-time applications which were lodged uh, with the Refugee Commissioner here in Malta. Mainly, these come from Libya and Eritrea. In spite of Malta's geographical position and the constant risk of an influx, Malta has been consistently contributing to the solidarity effort. We plan to have received the majority of asylum seekers to be relocated from Italy and Greece by end of this year. We have also responded to EASO and Frontex, assisted via the Union Civil Protection Mechanism, and we are working on the resettlement of a number of Syrian nationals from Turkey in accordance with our July 2015 commitment. Finally, a couple of remarks on the external dimension of migration. Ensuring a link between the internal and the external dimension remains essential. And therefore, Malta will give due importance to the external dimension of migration and asylum within the framework of the global approach to migration and mobility. This calls for work by both the, this ministry and Malta's Foreign Affairs Ministry. Cooperation with countries of origin and transit is crucial, a joint effort in a spirit of partnership. Good work is being done on the migration compacts with the five priority countries. The Maltese Presidency will also endeavour to monitor the implementation of the measures that have already been agreed upon in relation to the external dimension, including by following up on the 2015 Valletta Summit on Migration. In this regard, a senior officials meeting will take place in Malta on 8 and 9 of February 2017. The High Representative last week have, has confirmed her presence here and we would like also to, to have Commissioner Avramopoulos among us during uh, these days as well. In conclusion, I'm sure that we can count on you, Commissioner, dear friend Dimitris, and your advice, on your assistance and support during our business. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody, again. Uh, allow me to start by firstly expressing my warmest thanks uh, to my good friend, Carmelo Vela, the Minister of uh, Interior, Defense of Malta, uh, also to the other members of uh, the government for their very uh, warm hospitality. It's not the very first time in Malta, I've been here many times before, my previous times, and you all know that uh, it's uh, a country, a line that I have uh, in, uh, in my heart. So more than happy today to start the inaugurate our cooperation in view of the upcoming of this uh, presidency. Uh, we had, uh, as I recall, very 
preclude constructive discussion during these two days. And uh, Carmelo uh, uh, Lefort um, uh, depicted in the next way the framework of our cooperation in view of this very, very crucial six months uh, of the Maltese presidency. Um, let me tell you that uh, Malta has uh, a very important task uh, ahead. It will take, uh, uh, so we said the presidency, it will take up the presidency of the Council of the European Union on January 1st, 2017, in a period which many challenges will persist on migration, uh, borders and security. I was uh, really pleased to hear during the meetings I had uh, uh, yesterday and today, that all these topics will feature highly on the political agenda of the Maltese Presidency. I have repeatedly said during the last days that uh, this Presidency is not business as usual. It is one of the most important and crucial uh, Presidencies of the last uh, 40 years. We have quite uh, some more challenges ahead of us. And the European Commission remains committed to support, help, and collaborate, collaborate closely with uh, Malta as well uh, uh, as with the current Slovak presidency. Malta, as we all know, has been dealing with uh, the migratory phenomenon for a long time and has great experience in this area. Malta is also hosting the offices of the European Asylum Support Office, EASO, which uh, I visited yesterday and met with the staff and their executive director, Jose Carina. I hereby wish to commend EASO and its staff and management which are doing an excellent job under immense pressure, both in Italy and in Greece. Malta is making a significant contribution to the Union's operations in the Mediterranean to identify and process all those who arrive in the European Union seeking protection. We have proposed to boost its mandate and turn it into a fully-fledged European asylum agency, which uh, will have an even more central role to play in managing the European Union's asylum and migration policy in the future. In addition, Malta has been the country where the Valletta Summit in November 2015, together with the African leaders, the European Union, has put the basis for a closer cooperation with uh, the African countries. I would like to reiterate what I have repeatedly said in the past, that Volta is an example of commitment, resilience and respect towards European values and laws. This is valid not just for migration, but for all our endeavors, including also on border management and improving our security policies. In addition to our proposed asylum reform, in addition to carrying out implementation on the ground with relocations, resettlement, readmission and returns, and in addition to the recently launched European Borders and Coast Guard, which will be fully operational by the time Malta takes over the presidency. We also have a lot of homework on our path towards a genuine and effective security union. Fighting terrorism in all its aspects remains a critical priority for the safety and the cohesion of the European Union. We need to make sure that all our systems and tools are interconnected and future-proof in order to ensure the right level of security for the citizens of the European Union. 
Dear friends, the European Union and its member states remain committed to stay active and improve its policies on migration, security, fight against terrorism and radicalization, but also on the management of its external borders and cooperation with international partners. I trust that Malta will continue and improve the European Union's work in all these fields during its presidency. I want to reassure that Malta can count on the Commission's full support in this endeavour. And uh, I look forward to cooperating very closely with you and uh, your colleagues, my dear friend Carmelo, in the coming months. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, the Commissioner and myself will be happy to uh, have questions. Minister, you speak about um, the, the process of flexible solidarity needs to be broken to understand exactly what is being meant by it. Uh, do you foresee a long lasting solution on the lines of uh, burden sharing among all member states? You know what's happening in Eastern Europe. Hungarian MPs being asked to vote against the mandatory system, the slow presidency coming up with some proposals, fences going up, etc. So, as I said, migration is an issue that clearly um, would have a number of issues among member states. And you pointed out a number of them. Um, recently, we started hearing about the term flexible solidarity. What I said was, and I think we still need to discuss, and I believe that this morning also um, a paper is being um, published and discussed in the today and in the coming days, of what is intended by flexible solidarity. I also said that flexible solidarity not needs to be effective rather than flexible, flexible. Because if by flexibility we understand a pick can choose out of all the issues, um, some are saying maybe giving funds or giving some assets instead of taking migrants or under the relocation mechanism. So that is why I think it's still too early to comment further, but we need to discuss among member states what is really and truly understood by flexible solidarity. But I think we should stress on effective solidarity, which in my opinion is slightly different from maybe what I can guess is meant by flexible solidarity. Mark. Minister, recently the opposition called upon you to show the responsibility in the face of increased organized criminality in more times the lack of police action uh, due to corruption to fight uh, such problem. What are your comments uh, about this? Thanks, Mario. I have no problem in answering your question and also what the opposition is saying. But out of respect of the commissioner here, I think that first and foremost it's our duty before taking the presidency to tackle the issues that we spoke about. I will be happy uh, afterwards to answer your questions. Okay. Can, can I make a comment on the previous question, not on the last one? <laughs> uh, well, talking about uh, solidarity, we can put a lot of adjectives in front of the word solidarity, but the term itself does not need interpretations. Um, yesterday, while inspired by a discussion I had with the minister, I said that, can you imagine flexible, effective, or selective marriage does work? Same goes for solidarity. It is the moment for all member states to prove that they really mean it when they talk about solidarity. Solidarity and responsibility are not only moral values. They are basic legal principles binding all member states. These terms 
are explicitly stipulated in the founding treaties of the Union, enshrining the spirit that should prevail within the European Union. It is the moment to prove that we really mean it when we talk about it. We are in Malta today. Malta is one of the countries in Southern Europe that has lived very difficult moments in the past. In the beginning, everybody believed that it was a Maltese issue. Then it became a South European issue, a Southeastern European issue, and then European, pan-European, now global. So we have to go back to the principles upon which the European vision and the European project was built. And it's the moment for everybody to show more solidarity. Solidarity among member states in order to share this huge responsibility of protecting people at the same time of creating a more hostile and legal framework for the ones who want to come to Europe. But solidarity always also towards these desperate people. And I would like to commend and praise once again, because I was here in these difficult moments in the past, the Maltese people for having shown solidarity towards these desperate people. Solidarity is something more than what I said. It's the I iconic term of our civilization. And Europe is built on that. So, a lot of discussion has taken place during the last uh, uh, weeks. The Maltese presidency has a very heavy uh, I would say responsibility on its uh, shoulders to clarify once and forever what do we mean when we talk about it. And this presidency and the European Commission work hand in hand in order not only to promote but, but also to convince everybody in the Union that they must be part of our joint connect, a collective effort to sort this uh, uh, problem out by giving substance to the spirit and to the content of the word solidarity. Uh, I think the aftermath of the attempt at coup in Turkey, the country is even more like a dictatorship than a parliamentary democracy, and there are a number of arrests made over the past weeks. How can the Commission uh, entrust Turkey with a very sensitive role of dealing with the migrant crisis when it seems to be unable to offer basic rights themselves? We are following the developments in Turkey with. Uh, uh, attention. As you said, uh, we are in the aftermath, uh, in the aftermath uh, of an attempted uh, coup, and uh, we really want uh, to see the results, tangible results, in the field of our cooperation with Turkey. The EU-Turkey deal works. Minister um, referred to that before, and we have very positive results. The numbers have subsided dramatically during the last year. Just to remind you that last year more than 10,000 people were crossing, mostly refugees, the Aegean Sea to come over to Europe. Now the number has gone down, have dropped to 50 to 100 per day, a very manageable situation. This has to continue, but we are not only for that. We really wish Turkey to move ahead and to come back to the full normality. Turkey is surrounded by many problems and by many threats. ISIS, PKK from inside, a lot of terrorist attacks, and the situation politically is still volatile within uh, the country. We really want to see a democratic uh, Turkey coming closer uh, to Europe, and of course enhancing and deepening more our cooperation with uh, uh, the Turkish authorities, but also with the Turkish uh, uh, people. Given this very difficult, complex, and volatile situation in this part of the world, with instability uh, all across the arc from Tunisia to Ukraine, we all understand that we really need to have a stable Turkey on our side. We work on, on that and I believe that Turkey will respond positively uh, to um, the requirements that uh, the European Union has put in order to 
uh, deepen our cooperation. A good sign is that uh, 65 out of 74 benchmarks met by the European Union one year ago have already been met by Turkey, which proves that there is willingness and Turkey is very keen to come closer uh, to Europe. The doors of cooperation are open. We really want to see a stable and democratic Turkey coming back to normality and much closer to Europe. Further questions, please? Okay, so thank you very much for being here with us and wish you a pleasant day. Thank you, thank you. See you soon. See you very often. <laughs> That's from January 2nd.